the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. We are going to have another exciting story about King David. We are going to learn how because King David humbled himself, God exalted him and he became a great king. We've been waiting for that, haven't we? Well, today he's going to become king in our story. But first, Eddie wants to say something to you. Well, hello, everybody. You know, I just wanted to say today that my life, I don't know about yours, but my life is just a little bit boring. You know, there isn't enough going on to keep Eddie entertained. I need something to do. I just don't know what it is. Well, Eddie, you could uh, start a club. It could be a joy club. Joy could stand for Jesus first, then others, and then you. Oh, I would like that. I'd like to start a club, but I, I just have one question. That is, can I, can I be the president? Oh, I want to be the president. Please, please, please let Eddie be the president. Well, Eddie, usually a president is chosen by everyone. You don't just say, I want to be the president. Well, if I wait until I'm chosen, I'll never be the president. You know, no one's ever elected me, Eddie, to be an office. No, no, please, please just let me be the president. I, I, I really want to be the president. I, I'd be a good president. I know I would. Well, all right, Eddie. I think that we could let you be the president. Uh, so do you have any plans for the club? Oh, yeah. I got plans. We're having a meeting. We're having a meeting next Saturday. Well, Eddie, uh, so, so, you, so you already know what you're going to be doing, huh? Well, yes, I do. I've got plans. I, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to buy myself a new outfit. And I'm going to come, and I'm going to look really cool. And then I already know that if somebody wants to talk to Eddie, they have to raise their hand, and then I don't want you saying anything until I call on you. And then when I call on you, you must say, Mr. President, and I will say, yes, that's me. That's me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you want to. Say what you want to. Quick. Make it quick. Make it quick. I'm up here. I'm up here, you know. Well, Eddie, you just sound like you just want to be in control. You know, that's, that's not at all what God has in mind for a joy club where we put Jesus first and then others and then yourself last. Oh, well, I, I was kind of putting myself first there. You know, I never thought of putting Jesus first and then others, others second. Well, that would put me last. Wow. Well, I, I don't know. You know, if I wait around for others to put me someplace in the lineup, I'm usually last anyway. Well, Eddie, I'm glad you came today because we're going to learn what it means to wait for God to exalt us. Well, okay. You know, I need to learn that. I was just being a little pushy there, I guess. Oh, I'm glad I came today. I, I want to learn to wait on God and not be so pushy and not be so prideful. Oh, I'm embarrassed about what I did. Oh, please forgive me. Oh, okay. Hey, got to go now. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. Mm, love you. Bye. There is a king and he is ruling today. And he is a wise and powerful king. And he always does what is right. And he always knows the right thing to do. But he wants to share his kingdom with others. He is looking for others to rule and reign with him. But now he is looking for just special kinds of people. Now, you know, here, is someone right there. And you know, that person 
thinks, well, I am very smart. I think I would make a good ruler. I, in fact, have some ideas that I would like to implement that are much better than what the king is doing. I'm sure he wants me. Well, this king is not only very powerful and very wise, but he knows what everyone is thinking. And when he sees someone who thinks they're better, he will take that person and he will bring them down. He says, that's not who I want to rule my kingdom. I want someone to help me rule my kingdom who sees how just and good I am and recognizes that what I do is what should be done because it is. You know, this person over here, he thinks, do you know what? I don't know if the king would really want me. I, I, I'm not sure that I would make a good leader or a good ruler. Oh, I love the king and I love everything that the king does. Well, when that person thinks that, this king looks right down in their heart and he says, that's the person I want to exalt. That's the person that I want to lift up. That king is looking for people that humble themselves. Do you know when you humble yourself, you don't lift yourself up. You put yourself on a lower level. You say, no, I need help. I will do what you say. I don't want to be first. I don't have to be tops. But then there's others, and they want to exalt themselves. But God says, I'll tell you what, you humble yourself. You bring yourself low. If there's a seat at the table, don't take the best seat. Say, you know what, I'll take this one over here. You take the best one. If there's a big piece, you take that one. Uh, this one over here is just fine for me. Humble yourself, and if you humble yourself under, the Bible tells us, under the mighty hand of God, then God says, I will exalt you. I will lift you up. I will give you a position that you never dreamed possible. And I will do it at the right time. Now, you may be thinking, well, you know, nothing has ever really happened to me. That's great. Do you know what? That's okay. Maybe you haven't gotten that award at school. Maybe you haven't gotten that important position or been elected to a class office. God says, in the right time, I will exalt you. And in the meantime, you don't want these things that God doesn't want for you. You'll just be wasting your time. God has a plan for you. He says, at the right time, I will lift you up. I will exalt you. I will exalt you higher than you ever dreamed possible. Are you willing to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and wait for Him to exalt you in the right time? I hope so. I hope you're not pushy. You know, there's some kids that are so pushy. Oh, that is just not God's way at all. And we've been studying about David and oh, he wasn't pushy at all. No, he wasn't. But we're going to see what God does for him today. Do you know that verse is found in the Bible? It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. And it says, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time at just the right time. And that is what our memory verse says today. So we are going to do motions and we are going to learn to sing it. Now the motions today are very easy. I know you can get them the first time, but we put our hands together and we go, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. We are bowing down. We are taking a low position before God because He's the one who is great and mighty. So therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, then that He may exalt you in due time. Lift those hands high because when He exalts you, He exalts you. And that's found in 1 Peter 5, 6. Can you sing that and do the motions? OK, 
Hey, let's try that again. You did a wonderful job. Okay, let's do it one more time. That was great. You remember that when David was just a young boy, they think he was around 15 years old, that he was anointed by Samuel. And Samuel said, David, you're going to be the next king. But you remember that after that, Things weren't just wonderful. In fact, King Saul had been trying to kill him for many years now. And the Bible tells us, though, that David, even though he would have made a much better king than Saul, and even though he had opportunities to get rid of King Saul, he didn't do it. David says, oh, no, I'm going to wait for God. I'm going to wait for God to exalt me. I'm going to wait for him to give me the throne. Are you willing to wait for God to use you? David was willing. Well, right now, the Bible tells us that Saul and Jonathan, they were fighting against the Philistines. Remember that Saul, he had gone to the witch of Endor, and the witch of Endor had told him, you are going to be killed in battle. Well, David and his men were not fighting in that battle. And the Bible tells us, though, that they were wondering, how has the battle turned out? Because many of his men, their, their sons were fighting in the battle with King Saul. Their fathers were fighting. Their brothers. And they were anxiously awaiting. How's it going? Who's winning? D did very many people get killed? And the Bible tells us that, you know, in those days, they couldn't just text somebody and they didn't have cell phones. So they would have runners. And so the Bible says that there came a man and they could see him running. And as he was running, they took one look at him. And just from the very looks at him, they could say, see that the battle was not going good at all. Because in those days, when you were sad, you would put ashes on and rip your clothes. And this man, his clothes was ripped and he had ashes. And so when he came, the men and David, they said, how is it? How is it going? How, 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 who's winning? And the man says, oh, I have very sad news. He says, King Saul is dead. And so is Jonathan. In fact, he said, here is King Saul's crown and his bracelet. I came upon King Saul, and King Saul had been wounded. And King Saul, he begged me, he said, please kill me. So I did. Now, it was common knowledge that David had been running from King Saul, that King Saul wanted his life. And so this man probably thought, hmm, I will get in good with David. Because you remember last time that that isn't how King Saul died. King Saul committed suicide. He killed himself. And so this man says, oh, but I killed him. And he thought that David would be happy. But he wasn't telling the truth. But you know what? We're going to find out. He didn't know David because when David heard that his enemy, King Saul, the one that had tried to kill him, was dead, what do you think he did? What would you do if you had a big bully at school that had been just being mean to you and then something bad happened to that bully? Would you be really glad? Well, King David 
He was a man after God's own heart. And the Bible tells us that when he heard that Saul was dead and that his son Jonathan was dead, he just sobbed. He was very, very sad. In fact, you know, the Bible tells us that he even wrote a song. And he sang the song and he says, Oh, Jonathan, you were glorious when you were alive. You were a very, very good friend. And then he says, you and Saul were like mighty lions that you, you were, and under you, all of the daughters of Israel dressed in scarlet. You know, under King Saul, they must have had a prosperous time for the people to have fine and lovely clothes. But you notice, as David made up this song, he didn't just talk about his best friend, Jonathan. He says, no, Saul. He included Saul. You know, the Bible says that we are to love our enemies. We're to bless those who curse us. We're to do good to those who hate us. And David was a man after God's own heart. And he wrote that song for Saul too. And so the Bible tells us that as the sun went down, David turned to the man who by his own mouth said, I killed Saul. He says, I didn't even kill Saul. Saul was after me. I had the opportunity. I wouldn't do it. But the young man says, but he begged me. Now, kids, if someone is sick and hurting and you come across them and they beg you to kill them, is that what you're supposed to do? You know, the Bible says that what we're to do is we're to comfort them and, and help them and, and make them as comfortable as possible and pray with them and do everything we can. But we're not to kill them even if they beg us. And David says, what you have done is very, very wrong. So he says, by your own admission, you will have to die too. Well, after King Saul was dead, who had God chosen to be the next king? Well, it was David, and most people knew that, and David knew it. And so what should he do? Go back and say, okay, here I am. Make me king now. We all know that's what God wants. That's not what David did. David turned to the Lord. He waited for the Lord. He says, Lord, what should I do? Should I stay here or should I go back? And if I go, where should I go? And the Lord says, David, go to the city that you grew up near. Go to Hebron. That is where your brothers and your family and that is where your tribe is. So David went back to that place, the exact place that God says you are to go to. He followed God. He humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. He was going to wait for God to exalt him. So when David went back to Hebron where his family was, his brothers and his father and the people that knew him, they said, we know you're to be King David. And so they says, we want you to be King. And so he was anointed King for the second time. But this time he wasn't just anointed King. He actually became King. But he only became king of a little area. There was still a big area where he was not the king. But you know, David says, I'm going to wait, Lord. I'm going to wait until they come to me. I'm going to wait until you give me that area. Because you see, there was someone else who also wanted to be king. And that person said, himself up as king in the other area. And that person that set himself up to be king was one of Saul's sons. Three of Saul's sons had been killed, but this son, Ishbosheth, he set himself up and says, I want to be king. But you know what? He knew he was not to be the king. His brother was Jonathan. He knew that Jonathan had given to David the right to be king. He says, here, here's my crown. I'm going to be king under you. And even if it was to stay in Saul's line, Jonathan has a son. So Ishbosheth was not the next person chosen to be king. And also Saul's commander of his army, 
Abner, he also did not want to give up the kingdom to David. And Abner was there when King Saul himself said, David, you are going to be the king. So both of these men knew what God wanted. But you know what they did not do? They did not humble themselves under what God wanted. They exalted themselves. They didn't humble themselves and say, all right, Lord, yes, I'd like to be king, but no, you have a different plan for me. And, you know, I would like to still be general, but I'm going to be whatever David wants me to be. And so the Bible tells us that Ishbosheth could not have been king if Abner had not given him the power to do so. But as time went on, the Bible says that Abner, he looked at Ishbosheth and he thought, he's not a good king. He's not a good king. What am I doing? Why am I not letting David be the king? And so the Bible tells us that he made a trip to go and visit David after seven years of supporting the wrong person, the person he knew was not God's choice to be the king of that land. So when Abner went to visit David, what do you think David did? It was because of Abner that he had not been king of all of Israel. That was God's will and he knew it. Do you think that he would have something against Abner? You know, the Bible tells us that he didn't. He was waiting for God. And so he says to Abner, welcome. And he threw a three-day feast for Abner. And Abner says, David, I am so sorry. You were chosen by God to be the king. It was God's will for you to be the king. I am going to go to all of the tribes and say, let's make David our king. He is God's choice. Do you know Abner at last had decided to humble himself under the mighty hand of God. He was now going to do what was right. Even though he might not be the general, he said, it's okay. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And David was so delighted. And so after the three-day feast, the Bible tells us that Abner left. Well, just as Abner was leaving the three-day feast, the Bible tells us that David's general, Joab, arrived there. And Joab, when he heard that Abner had just left, he sent word to Abner, please, Abner, come back. And you know, the Bible tells us that Abner, he came back. Now, these two men knew each other. Now, Abner had killed Joab's brother, but he hadn't wanted to. It had been in battle. And Joab's brother had been chasing Abner and Abner says, quit chasing me. Don't chase me. I will have to kill you. I don't want to kill you. But the brother just kept chasing. And so finally Abner turned around and he killed him, but he didn't want to. Well, Joab had always been angry and upset over that. So the Bible tells us that Joab invited Abner back and he pretended like he was friends. But you know what? Joab, he didn't humble himself under God's will and protection either. The Bible says that he took a knife and when Abner wasn't looking, he killed Abner. And so Abner was not able then to go throughout the whole kingdom and tell everyone, please come over, make David the king. And you know, the Bible tells us that David was so upset over that. It was not his intent to kill Abner. And he let everybody know, no, I did not do that. It was not for me. And he cried and he wept and he mourned for Abner. Well, Ishbosheth, remember, was still king. And Abner now was dead, so he wasn't there to go tell everyone, let's come over to David. So Ishbosheth, I'm sure he heard what happened to Abner. But you know, the Bible tells us that he was not a good king. And his people did not love him. They knew he was not king. And two people of his own tribe, the Bible came, says that they came in and they killed Ishbosheth. 
And so now the people in, in the other area of Israel, they didn't have a king. But you know, still, David, he waited. He says, you know what? I'm going to wait for God. He didn't go to them then and say, okay, you don't have anybody. What about me? He waited. And the Bible tells us that the people of the other area, they got together and they said, why are we waiting? Why do we not do what God told us to do in the first place? You know, kids, when you don't obey God and you don't do what God wants you to do, you miss out on his rich blessing. Because Abner, you know, Abner could have been alive under the greatest king that ever ruled Israel. But because he did not trust God and do what God wanted him to do, he was killed. He never got to live under that great king. And Ishbosheth, he could have lived under the greatest king. He would not have been king, but he would have had an important position. David had promised that all of Saul's descendants he would be merciful to and take care of. He could have lived in a wonderful time in Israel, but because he did not follow God, he did not humble himself, he never got that opportunity. I hope you don't miss out on the blessing of God because you do not allow him to have first place in your life and you do not say lord whatever your plan for me is that's all right i don't have to be first i don't have to be the most important i want to be what you want me to be well when the people found out that abner was dead and also that ishbosheth was dead the bible tells us that they said why have we been waiting we know it was God's will for David to be our king. David used to be the commander of the army, and oh, he was so great, and God blessed him so much. Oh, David is a wonderful man after God's own heart. Let's let him rule and reign over us. And so they went to David. Remember, David was waiting. He wasn't pushy. He didn't say, oh, I, I want what I want and I'm going to get it regardless. Oh, no. He was waiting for the Lord. And so they went to King David. And there for the third time, David was anointed king again. David, remember, was first anointed when he was 15. And then he became king over the two tribes when he was about 30. Well, now he's 37, and at last he is king over all 12 tribes of Israel. He had waited on God, and God exalted him at just the right time. I hope you wait on God. Oh, he says, I've got a plan for your life, and I know just when would be the right time. We don't know that, but he knows that. Oh, and David was a great, great king. Now, you know, um, let me ask you a question. If you could have a great person rule over your life, would you want that? Would you say, well, yes, but if there was really a wonderful person and who knew everything and, and, and he wanted me and to do what he wanted, yes, I would do that. Do you know that the greatest king ever is saying to you, I have a plan for you. I have given you my word. I want you to follow after me. And you know, that's the Lord Jesus. He wants to be king and ruler of your heart and of your life. Now, Jesus, he was the greatest king that ever lived on this earth. And now, if you had a choice of where you'd like to be born and in what family, would you say, oh, you know, someone maybe that was just a little bit higher up? Do you know, Jesus did have a choice. And the Bible says that he chose to be born in a manger that's in a stable. Do you know, I grew up on a farm and there were animals in our barn. And when those animals had to go to the bathroom, they didn't say, well, do you excuse me, please? No, when they had to go, it was just big, big buckets they would go. And then it would be smelly. 
When Jesus was born in that stable, it stank and it wasn't clean. But he says, I want to be born somewhere that everyone can come. And he chose that. And then during his lifetime, the Bible tells us that he humbled himself. And you know, kids, when he humbled himself and they arrested him, you know, one thing that happened, oh, the Bible says that they spit in his face. Oh, big glob of spit. You know, kids, if anybody ever spit in your face, I guarantee you would remember that the rest of your life. It was just, and he says, he humbled himself and he says, you know what? Your sin deserves punishment. I will take that punishment. And the Bible says that he says, I will allow myself to be punished even to death on the cross. And when they put him on the cross, you know, because it was humiliating. I know some people and they have been punished for things that they haven't done. And you know that they for, they remember that forever. They always remember, you know, I didn't do that and I was punished. It was so embarrassing. It was so humiliating. But Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the humiliating death on the cross. And you know why he did that? The Bible says that he did that for the joy that was set before him. He now is ruling and reigning. And of course, where is he ruling and reigning? He is ruling and reigning in heaven. And he is looking for those to rule and reign with him. But I want to tell you that Jesus endured this for the joy that was set before him. And the joy that was set before him wasn't just to rule and reign. He already ruled and reigned before all of this. The joy that was set before him was so that you and I could have our sins forgiven and that we could rule and reign with him. He says, I, I did all of this so that you could be right there with me in heaven. I did this so your sins could be forgiven, so you could be exalted. And in due time, he will exalt you to the highest heaven. But let me ask you a question. Are you humbling yourself under God? Are you saying, I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to be kind to my brother and sister? I'm going to admit when I'm wrong. I'm not going to always push and shove to be first. I'm going to let others go before me. Are you humbling self? And then you must also humble yourself and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I can't get to heaven on my own. There's nothing I can do will wash my sin away only by putting my total faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as being the only one that died for me. You know, that takes humility to say, I can't do it. Only you, Lord Jesus. It takes humility too to say, I'm a sinner. I've done things that are wrong. I'm not perfect. Are you willing to humble yourself? under the mighty hand of God, so He can exalt you, lift you up in due time. Oh, I hope so. Don't miss out. Give yourself to the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. He has great plans for you. I'm so glad you joined us today. I hope you put yourself under the greatest King who wants to rule and reign your life. Humble yourself. Do what he says. He has plans for you. Oh, I'm so glad you joined us today. I will see you next time. Bye. Remember, God loves you, and I do too, very much. Bye.